Hello, everybody, and welcome to Behind the Voices. Thank you, Lasserol, for providing that name for us, our first VIP person uh, on Twitch. And um, we are here with the one, the only, Miley Flanagan. Hey! Hi, everybody out there, <laughs> whoever you are, wherever you are. Um, wh who do we have uh, with us today? Who I'm going to check out and see who are one of our, uh, let's see, furthest person out that I can see. No? Ah, okay. I'm not sure where you guys are all at or from. Um, I don't see Ashley on here, who's normally joining us from Australia, but, you know. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And we have another person from um, Spain, from Spain, um, <laughs> who's a regular. Ashley's around here. She might not be uh, able to join us today. Uh, I couldn't hear that. Somebody from Minnesota. Hey, 25. someone from five. All right. All right. Awesome. Okay. I can't hear you as well when you are looking that way okay. as when you're straight gotcha. on. So, so I'm, if, I'm if you said something, to... I wasn't sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there we go. I'm going to okay. move this a little bit. So awesome. Perfect. Uh, Ashley did just join us. Ashley is uh, joining us from Australia. So there you go. God, what, what time is it in Australia? I, I think. If I'm not mistaken, Ashley, isn't it like 16 or 17 hours later? It's like tomorrow sometime. I think it, if I'm not mistaken, it might be like around 11 or 12 on uh, Friday. Oh, wow. Yeah. So we shall see. Welcome. Glad this is your first one. Awesome. UK. Somebody from the UK joining us. Norwich. Excellent. Awesome. In Spain, it's 2 a.m. on Friday. Oh, okay. party time. In Spain, they're not even in bed yet, so that doesn't matter. They eat at 1030. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, welcome, guys. Uh, glad you all could join us here today. And um, Miley, especially, thank you for uh, being on my show and um, spending some time with all of all of the people. I think especially during what's going on right now with the whole coronavirus staying at home, you know, we all need to find ways to be able to stay connected. Yeah. And especially since we have no idea. Um, oh, I, I don't even know that I showed this to you, but uh, this, this shirt, um, originally I was going to wear an anime detour, which obviously we couldn't go to and be right. part of. But, you know, especially since we have no idea when the next convention is going to be, we all just, you know, got to find ways to still stay in touch with everybody, right? Yes. Yeah. I've been doing a lot of Zoom happy hours with um, my friends and family. Okay. Yeah. So Actually, you guys just set up a specific time and um, yeah, like um, drink and talk. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> you know, unless it's earlier and then we don't drink. But, um, right. but yeah, like I... I've been having one uh, tonight, usually at like 6.30, but I didn't get the email about it, so maybe it's, it's off. Um, and then my other friends that are all in L.A., we've done one on Friday nights. Okay. And then I just set one up uh, for Saturday night with some other friends from L.A. who I never see. But I just got an email from, and I'll, we'll talk about that in a minute, yeah. but these the people that I'm working on the pilot with that we're doing one, Oh, on Saturday cool. night. So I'm going to have to, my happy hours are overlapping. Yeah. I'm going to have to start <laughs> scheduling them. Yeah. So um, I wasn't able to do uh, a ton of research. I was able to do a little bit of research on you. Um, and um, uh, where are you originally from? Oh, oh, Jesus. That's the hardest question. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's why people look it up and they're like, where are you from? Uh, Hawaii, I'm an army Hawaii. brat. Yeah, well, no, I was born in Hawaii, you moved to Florida when I was like one for a year, moved back to Hawaii, then I moved to Bangkok when I was real young. Oh, then wow. I lived in Bangkok, then I moved to Nuremberg, then I moved to Munich, then I went to college in Boston. My parents moved back to the States. Um, I lived in D.C. for like a year, then I moved to Minneapolis for about 
seven years or so, a little less. And then I moved to Los Angeles, which is uh, 26 years ago. Okay. Yeah. And so with all the moving around that you did, it sounds like you're a military brat. Yeah. Yeah. No? yeah. Yes. Okay. My dad worked for the army. Yeah. Oh, and he's still alive. He has passed. My parents have both passed. Okay. Um, but you know, they're not living through this. Yeah. So, oh my gosh. I, I can't I, imagine I, if yeah. I feel sorry for people whose parents are in assisted living or something. Oh. And so, um, you know, it's the little things you got to be thankful for. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So um, you, you, you said you did go to college where? I went to Boston College. Boston. Yeah. Okay. I did not study acting. I studied political science and math. Wow. Ended up with a degree in poli sci. Okay. <clears throat> with a concentration in math and history, kind of, they didn't give minors at that college. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I had no intention on being an actor. I thought I was going to be a politician or a, my dad was a spy, which is another story. And I thought wow. I'd be a spy like my dad. I even applied and, <laughs> and I wow. was always doing comedy in college. And so yeah. I t- kept up with the comedy and told the Department of Defense I didn't want to be a spy. And Moved to Minneapolis and started my acting career professionally. Okay. Yeah. So did did you originally start off in Minneapolis like doing sketch stuff or improv? Or? Yeah. Well, what I, I reformed my comedy group from college when I was living, kind of lived in D.C. for a year. I had to get some dental work done. It sounds crazy, but I had this okay. dental sort of thing. Then I was a temp and I was waiting for this spy thing. And so I slipped on my sister's fold out chair, uh, which was painful, but oh. fun. And uh, my parents lived in Laurel, Maryland at that point, which was a suburb of DC. So I kind of go there. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> I reformed my college comedy group. A lot of them were a year behind me. I reformed them and I booked us all over Cape Cod. And um, so we performed all summer. We were really good. And we said, let's keep going. One day, hungover on the beach, we decided where to go. You know, New York seemed big. Chicago seemed flooded. We gave it. One guy had a brother in Atlanta, which we knew was hopping. And then uh, my friend Wayne Wilderson, who you would recognize as an actor, he said, my parents live in Minneapolis. It's a great artistic town. They'll help us out. And and sure enough, they did help us. We all got jobs right away. And it's a great artistic community. And we all kept together and performed together, lived in the same house together for years. And then we- Then we finally broke up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So when you came to LA 26 years ago, yeah, um, you started off doing on camera stuff, right? Um, oh, 24 years ago. Sorry, 24, 24 okay. years ago. Um, I started on camera work. Yes, I did. For the, f- I got signed right away by my agents. I I moved here with a play, and the play went crazy. We won the LA Weekly Award. We won oh, a lot wow. of awards. Yeah, it was packed. Um, so one of the guys from here that was in it, he um, brought his agents. I'm still with them commercially. And so I got signed right away for them commercially. And it took me about a year before I booked my first commercial. But then that second year, I was on fire. And when I was actually interviewing for commercials, they said, you should, you've got a weird little voice. Do you do voiceovers? And I had done just a few. Yeah. And they said, you should go to this class and this class and this class. And I did get your demo by Sue Blue, and I did. Uh-huh. And um, and she also gave me my first job. Um, it, is, it was all in the first two weeks was Men in Black, the series, or Jackie Chan, the series. I'm not sure which one came first. It was oh, all wow. within the same, That's awesome. yeah, two, 10 days, yeah, so. Who else did you take classes with besides Sue? Um, Calmanson and Calmanson. Yep. Um, for commercials. Yep. Um, I took it uh, at, um, oh my God, I recommend it when I teach all the time too. Um, Voice Tracks West. Okay. But that was a different teacher every week. Right. You know, like someone, video games, yeah. you know, a director. Um, I took an intensive with Andrea Romano, who's the best. Nice. She casts yeah. all the Marvel. She's retired now, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She has like 2,700 Emmys. Yeah. Um, I took that and then I took another one and I'm trying to remember who it was with. Um, and then I took, you know, I prepped my demo, which was, you do an intensive with Sue Blue, Mm -hmm. um, who's quite well known. And I did my demo with her and, oh, but in the meantime, I had already been signed. So they, 
my commercial agency had a small voiceover agency and they started sending me out. So I actually was being sent out before I had a demo, which is, will never probably happen these days. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Are you still with the same, um, a, uh, VO company as far as well, commercial or did that switch? My VO agent, Pat Brady, moved oh, Pat, PMR. Yeah, yeah Pat. Everybody knows Pat. Everybody knows Pat. Pat Brady is a, a legend in voice. <laughs> so she, um, KMR, my commercial agency, closed down their voiceover division. She moved to CESD right. and took me. I'm one of the people that she took with her. Yeah. So she took like maybe 20 of us. And after the first year, I think it was down to only 10 of us that had moved with her yep. to join the CEST family. And I've been with them ever since, which is, you know, 20 years or 19, right. something like that, 18, 19, I don't know. Yeah. And so, I mean, I'm still with all those agents. Yeah. Yeah. When you, when you were doing your, the, the voiceover stuff, um, obviously a lot of that was original animation. Yes. It was all original animation. So <laughs> how did this transition happen into anime like how did did you audition for that did you yeah know? i auditioned for naruto okay. I've, I've only ever done naruto i don't yeah, do other yeah. anime right not that i have an audition i haven't much auditioned for it um but i did one episode of astro boy back okay. in the day okay i was also up for the lead of out uh, to play astro boy right and uh it went to my good friend candy milo she was astro boy okay. so you know can't complain there yeah um but I just auditioned like everything else. And I think, you know, I just didn't think anything of it. And it became larger than life. And obviously didn't know it was going to go this long and be this big. Right. But um, I'm given very few anime auditions. Um, yeah. I, I mean, for a while, Naruto was so present. I don't think they would really want to cast me as kind of a lead in another anime. Right. I don't know. Yeah. It's not, one, t- one time Amanda Miller told me, she said, you know, when you say I don't do other anime, it sounds like you don't want to do other anime, but I'm like, I would do other anime, you know? <laughs> if you were asked to, if, right? I was asked to, but, um, right. but you know, the pay scale for anime versus original animation is Huge. quite, quite Huge. strange. Huge. And Huge. different, yes. So yeah. my agents obviously push for me. I do a lot of stuff for Nick and, you yeah. know, I've done a lot of pilot, a lot a lot of original pilots that have gone nowhere. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And um, if I'm not mistaken, you have actually won an Emmy yourself. I did. I did a show called Jakers, the Adventures of Piggly Minks mm-hmm. for uh, five years with Tara Strong and Pam Adlon and Charlie Adler. And, oh, uh, Charlie. Yeah. He's awesome. And um, uh, Tom Hernandez was on it. Uh, uh, you know, it was just great. Um I did that for five years. Uh, it was on PBS original, really cute, called Jakers, The Adventures of Piggly Minks. I played the lead. And um, I, w- I was nominated twice and I won one Emmy. That's so, awesome. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. It's broken. It's sitting in my living room over there by the TV. <laughs> <laughs> now, ha- besides the voiceover stuff, have you, you've also been nominated for on-camera stuff too, correct? Or no? Uh... No, I've won a bunch of awards for theater in Los Angeles. Okay. Um, I was nominated for an Annie Award, um, but uh, no, I, I don't think so. Okay. I mean, I think our show Lab Rats might have been nominated for some awards, yeah, but not me specifically. Okay. Okay. I was on that Lab Rat show on camera for it ended a few years ago. I was on that for five years. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did did you find because I, I, before I put two and two together and realized that you were, you know, the voice of Naruto, I remember like all the shows that I was watching, you know, um, stuff that you were in, you know, it's like that character actress that's like, oh my gosh, I recognize her, you know, and I recognize her in that and I recognize her in that. It's like, did you find when you started off here in Los Angeles that after you had after people started recognizing some of the work that you did, that things just kind of spiraled from yeah. one show into another. Like, it's like, yeah, we'll use my flan again. Cause you know, well, I think um, what happened for me, it took a long time to get my theatrical career, uh, theatrical meaning uh, on camera television shows and film. That's what yeah. they mean by theatrical in the biz. Right. Um, 
And I was doing a lot of theater, which gave me great exposure to, I worked with a playwright named Justin Tanner for years. And he, he wrote on Gilmore Girls. And I know a lot of people that wrote on Roseanne and stuff. So they would come see these shows. So that would give me opportunities. But what happened was like one year I booked 18 commercials, which is unheard of on camera. Oh, mackerel. Yeah. And then for years and years, I was on a tear commercially. I would have big commercials and they'd be on all the time. And so people see your face. And finally, I broke through the barrier getting these small co-star roles. Um, like I was on Grey's Anatomy recurring for um, the first year, four episodes. And um, you kind of build up from there. Yeah. And then you get the audition, you, the chance to audition for something because someone has seen you in, like I did Desperate Housewives. So they'll call me in for another show that they're casting. Right. Or someone who's a fan of Desperate Housewives, who's a casting person, will call you in. Or... Like I said, a writer would call me in to yeah. their show and then I would book it and then they, someone else would see me. Yeah. Um, so for me, it spiraled like that, like okay. a lot, a lot. I mean, it just, yeah. theatrically, it really took off when I got a manager. She got me a really good agents that I'm with now. Mm. Um, before that, I was with fake agencies. Mm. We would do anything to try and get an audition. Yeah, well, right, exactly. I remember yeah. those days. <laughs> yeah. You don't do any on camera? I, I haven't done on camera in a very long time. Very, be, very long I mean, time. I can see you doing a lot of roles on camera. Yeah. I, I, yeah. You know, if I pushed myself to do it, I would basically be starting from scratch all over again because the stuff that I have from like my on camera demo is like from 20 plus years ago. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But when I mean, I you're, 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 you're a great actor and you're a good type, you know? Oh, so thank I think, you. I think you could definitely, you're kind of remind me of, do you know J.P. Manu, the actor? J.P. Manu, no. He's, you can look him up, he's a character actor. Okay. Um, he's got the same look as you. Or yeah. Jim Rash, do you know who Jim Rash is? No. He's a groundling. He also has an Oscar because he wrote, uh, he writes movies and stuff, but oh, he wow. looks like you. He's got the same, like, kind of shape and, you yeah. know. No hair. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let me check in with our viewers and um, see some of the questions that they may have had. I know I'm probably going to, we're probably going to be getting a lot of Naruto questions, so just brace yourself. <laughs> oh, that's all I ever get. <laughs> Odd question for you. Okay. Do okay. You, you, do you know most of the characters from the show? No. <laughs> <laughs> there are like okay. hundreds of characters. <laughs> I know. Uh, I know. I know. You know a few. The of main them. ones. You're right. Huh? You know a few. Yeah. Of them. Like yeah. Hinata. And of course, Sakura, of course. Hinata, Orochimaru. Yeah. You know, Kakashi. Yeah. Sasuke. <laughs> So, but, um, but like people will be like the the one weird wacky question uh, from the first person here is uh, uh, let's see. Um, Will Naruto ever beat Hinata in a ramen eating contest? Um, I couldn't hear the first part of it. Will <laughs> Naruto ever beat Hinata in a ramen eating contest? Hell yes. <laughs> I think I'm pretty sure he could beat anybody in a ramen eating contest. I'm pretty I, sure I, I could beat people at a ramen eating contest. I would agree with that. I would agree with that. Have you ever been... Uh, like it, out, out where you live, is there a, uh, uh, I forget what it's, is it Naruto ramen? Yeah. Yeah. Have um, you been? I, not the, the nearest ramen place to me. It's a shame because it just opened and it was really good. And we sort of, because when I was doing conventions, <clears throat> we'd always go there on Monday nights because we'd come late on Sunday and, you know, you're just tired. And right. so we started going there all the time. And unfortunately it was, months before this hit. So 
Um, they don't have a Naruto ramen, but I've been in places in Studio City that have. Oh, and yeah. I said something to the effect of, oh, you know, I played that Naruto. And they'll be like, hey, okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, I think when I say that, if I don't put it in context, they think, like, they'll say, people will say to me, I play Naruto too. Meaning that they play the game. Right. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it just becomes so much more of an explanation that I'm willing to give if I'm trying to eat at a restaurant. Like, <laughs> no, I do the voice. So I've, yeah. I've rarely said anything like that. But. Yeah, yeah. Do you know Jeff um, Burns? You know, I I only know him through Twitter. Okay. Uh, but All right. Well, but you guys I, say hi. I, <laughs> oh, hi. I feel like I should know him, but I swear to God, if he showed up on my doorstop, doorstep, I, I, I don't know if I, I, I'd know who he was. Yeah. But I know a lot about him. I mean, <laughs> so hi, Jeff. Um, let's see. Oh. Um, do you have any favorite memories working with Disney legend Russo Taylor? Russie Taylor. Yes, I forgot to mention, she's one of the people that I forgot to mention on, um, on the Jaker show. Mm. And uh, Russie played Minnie Mouse. She passed away a few months ago. Yeah. Um, rest in peace. And she was delightful. She was so talented. She was actually kind of raised in the circus, believe it or not. Really? She had, yeah, she had the most infectious laugh. You know, when it, whenever people say that, I don't always believe them. It sounds so trite and it sounds like a phrase, but I could really apply it to her. And she would always, her husband, Wayne, would drive her to sessions and sit with her. Wayne was Mickey Mouse and they met playing Minnie and Mickey. Oh. When they first met, they were married to other people, oh. but then they both got divorced <laughs> and they remained married for like 40 years. And then he wow. passed away um, from diabetes and then she passed away. She was in her 70s. But she, Tara, Charlie and I, I doing that Jaker show, I mean, Tara, Tara Strong, Charlie Adler, Lucy and I, I have never laughed so hard during sessions Never, ever, ever have I laughed that hard. And Charlie Adler is a filthy, filthy mouth. Yeah. <laughs> and would say the rudest things, which I appreciate. And the, we would get going and, you know, thank God the PBS people weren't in the room when we were recording because it was, it was very fun. Yeah. yeah. But Rusi was, I was very, very upset when she passed away. I hadn't seen her in a couple of years. Um, she gave me an Irish ring from the show, which I treasure. Oh. And... She kept giving me little pigs because I was a pig. She right. said, I don't know why. She had this really high voice. I don't know why I keep giving you pigs. But I, I love them. I treasure them. Uh, yeah. That's very cool. Uh, I got a little bubbly. Cheers. Oh, you? Ah, yeah. cheers. I am, I am only drinking water as we speak. Well, I have a variety. I have Perrier and... I, Do you, uh, do you ever watch Disney movies? Um, the old ones or like the new ones? Either. Um, not not really. No, I didn't when I was a kid because we didn't have them. I was overseas, mm -hmm. uh, and I, you know, I, I I don't have that kind of attachment. Uh, you know, when I was right. working for Disney for Lab Rats, um, 
I was much more aware. I'd have the channel on in the background a lot. So I was much more familiar with the, the Disney TV shows. Gotcha. Um, because we also would film like across the set for you know, the street from them, you know, yeah, we'd yeah. be at stage five and they were at stage six. And so you kind of became aware of that universe. And the executive producers of Lab Rats also produced, um, you know, like Kicking It and, uh, you know, uh, oh my God, the Debbie Ryan show, which I'm spacing out on right now. But mm. um, uh, anyway, they, you know, it's kind of like bunked and all those shows. You kind of got to know a little bit the other people. And one year I did the promos for the channel where um, they had me dress. It was right when they bought the Star Wars property rights. Okay. So they dressed me like Darth Vader. <laughs> I, I grilled all the Disney stars for these little promos. They're pretty cute. Um, so I got to know a few of those people a little bit. Yeah. Like, and some of our crews worked on both shows. So they'd work on, okay. the, like the hair and makeup only works two days right. on our show and two days on their show. So like, gotcha. Okay. <laughs> Gentlemen, six, I, I, I was waiting for this question from you. Okay. Favorite silent movie? How? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'm not a, I'm not one of those people. I'm a very contemporary person. Yeah. Um, you know, what, what was the movie? Um, it wasn't a silent movie, but it was um, the guy the Italian guy. It was an Italian movie. It took place in a concentration camp and he would make up all, he'd spin all these yarns for his kid. Beautiful life, or um, remember? Um, um, yeah, I kind of. I think it might be Beautiful Life. Yeah, yeah. Um, that had elements of a silent movie to it. He was spinning these tales to keep the kid engaged, right. and it took place in, in um, you know, in a cinema that right. showed silent movies. Yes, yes, yes. So I, I'm, fortunately, I'm sp spacing out on the name, but I like that one a lot. Okay. My Beautiful Life or something? I don't know. Yeah. Um, life is Beautiful. There you life go. is Beautiful. It's not really a silent film, but I loved yeah. it. What would you say, as far as Naruto goes? What would what do you have a favorite episode or a favorite memory of of uh, in in the entire span of the <laughs> universe of Naruto? Um, either a favorite episode or a favorite memory that uh, and and part two of that would be your the best part about voicing Naruto. Um. I really love the first fight with Sasuke across when they're screaming at each other. Yep. Um, I think because it was so raw and so emotional. Plus, I, I think Yuri does a great job as Sasuke. Really yeah. outstanding and it elevates. Whenever you work with someone that's really good, it elevates your own work. And I felt like his work elevated my work. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and it was raw and emotional and pivotal. And... It's something that we constantly do flashbacks to. So it's kind of omnipresent, right? Yeah. Like there'll be a, a random flashback to it or a random flashback in a video game to it. Um, so I, I, that was one of those things that I really, really enjoyed. And it was really hard work. It was like, first of all, vocally, it was very, very taxing because it was screaming yeah. and screaming emotionally. Um, so you got to draw from that. So it, when you do that kind of digging, it sticks with you. And I tend to like, um, as much as I love all the funny stuff and my background is comedy and I still do comedy, um, doing the emotional raw stuff is the stuff that I remember most from the series. Yeah. I don't know. How about you? Yeah, no, I, I would agree. Um, <laughs> for me, um, 
I mean, you know, Shino is just kind of like blink and then out and blink and out. And um, for the most part, there I didn't really get attached to him until later yeah. in the series uh, in Shippuden when he started appearing more. And I, I think for me, just like you, you know, there's there there were a lot of fight scenes, especially you know when Naruto and Shino teamed up together. Um, yeah, but. The the one for me that really stood out the most, which is actually what made me get this. Oh, did you have that last time I saw you? I did. Yes. Oh, yeah. Maybe yeah. Maybe I forgot. That's super cool. Um, but that that's the Abarami clan symbol. Um, but um, what solidified that for me was, um, it was like one of the last few episodes in Shippuden when you find out why he starts to pivot and transition to want to become a teacher yeah um which kind of leads into boruto and you know him kind of finding himself you know yeah. it's, it's the whole finding yourself kind of anytime you have a finding yourself kind of storyline you know I, I think as actors we get really attached to that especially if we've had you know several mm -hmm. sessions where we've been able to portray that character yeah i think the beauty of this show is <clears throat> in all of its glory, but one of it is um, that it does dig deep. There's plenty of, um, there are plenty of shows out there that are just cartoons. Nothing wrong with that. They're great. Yep. Um, they're enjoyable and entertaining and, you know, everything else. But this is like, it's so deep and it's so layered. And, and when I go to conventions, um, I meet so many people who write me letters and drop off a note that they can't, they don't want to talk to me in front of other people yeah. to tell me how much it's meant to them. I, it, it's astoundingly, it's more um, 30, 30 -ish year old guys that come up to me at conventions now and say, you know, this really changed suicidal or they grew up in a crappy family or they moved around and didn't have any friends. And this kind of gave them that, that gave them purpose and also helped them through tough times. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I can't tr trade that for anything, you know, like I, it's hard to explain to people who, who don't see that happen in person. You've seen it and it's happened to you. I get it constantly at conventions. Yeah. Like I, unfortunately it's never at a time when my family members or somebody has been there. I'm like, you don't understand, but then they'll talk to like my sister-in-law is a lawyer and she has this paralegal that works for a young guy. He's probably in his late twenties. And she's like, I just kind of mentioned that you were Naruto and he flipped. Like, you know, <laughs> and, and, you know, she's like, you're, you know, you're a big deal. Like, this is a big deal. And I'm like, yeah, I've been telling you. Because <laughs> none of my family watches it. Right. Nobody. Nobody. Right. Yeah. Uh, um. Okay. Here's a question from Jeff. Um, when you are working on a show like Naruto that has gone on for years and years and years and years, um, what's it been like to work with multiple directors over the course of the show? What's it like, he said? Yeah. Um, well, we haven't really worked with that many directors. Um, True. Mary Elizabeth, direct, Jeff Nimoy directed the first several and then he, he left. So it really was, he didn't do that many. Yeah. Mary Elizabeth came on episode 18 or 19 or something. Okay. Well, that was so long ago. I mean, you know, then she stuck around for 10 or 11 years. Right. Right. Um, and then um, we have Susie Goldish, who's awesome, mm -hmm. and Ryan, and right. they have directed um, <clears throat> every once in a while in the beginning before Sam Regal became such a big deal, uh, he would fill in if someone was sick. Um, yeah. or Liam O'Brien would, or every once in a while, um, Steve would, or, uh, um, uh, Kirk Thornton would, mm -hmm. but that was like an episode or two. It's like, <clears throat> you know, if somebody had to leave where they had to, whatever, they got sick or something. Yeah. Um, and really in those, you're kind of almost 
direct it. Kirk would be like, I don't know what's happening. You could direct yourself. You've been doing it for 10 years, right? Um, <laughs> yeah. But we, I mean, really, Mary Elizabeth really steered the ship. Yes, she she cast everybody pretty much. She's amazing to work with. She knew the story inside and out more than any of us do. Yeah. Still does. And so, like, she, that was a building block. And then from there, Susie took off. And obviously Ryan too. Sure. I mean, I still say he's new and he's been doing it for five, maybe four years, five years. I don't know. Yeah. <clears throat> but, um, so, you know, obviously like I have a special place in my heart for working with Mary because that was really the building this whole legacy of this show. Yep. Um, but other than that, it's, you know, everybody's part of that team. Yeah. So it's not like, um, like sitcoms are weird when I do on camera sitcoms. You get used to, like, a lot of shows have one or two primary directors, mm -hmm. and you might have a guest director come in. Right. Um, or somebody who's the first AD may start directing. Um, that's weirder. That's weird. Because sometimes you get in a rhythm, and you, there was only one time on Lab Rats, maybe, that I just, I felt like it wasn't really in sync with uh, one of the directors that came in. Um, just not as, as, as in sync as I would have liked to have been. Yeah. Um, but that's your job, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Your job is to make it work. So right. whether or not you feel like you're in sync with that person, it doesn't really matter. You have to do the job. Yeah, absolutely. I am going to be forever grateful to Mary. Um, I'm, before she did um, Naruto, she was on Digimon. Um, a lot of the fans that are watching us today are from the Digimon fandom. And um, oh. uh, when Mary went on to do Naruto, quick funny story with Sam. Um, Sam originally was Shino. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So, okay. You know, <laughs> do you know? I know because trying? we yeah. would work. Uh, I'd hear him. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He would leave me horrible notes in the script. <laughs> horrible. He and Liam both when we had paper scripts. Anyway, go on. So do you know how that transition happened? No. Oh, so I, the, the one episode where um, Shino is prominent in the tune-in exams, Sam was playing both Shino and the, the guy that Shino was fighting against. Oh. And I guess when it got to Japan, from what I recall Mary telling me, is um, when, when Japan was, was reviewing you know, the English dub, they said, uh, the, the two characters sound too similar. So you need to pick what, whatever you want Sam to do. And because that particular episode was focused on Shino's opponent, um, it, who had a great backstory, um, yeah. throughout the entire episode. And Sheena was very, you know, like I said, you know, it's like sprinkling, yeah. like here and there. It's like, eh, you know, Sheena's probably not going to be a very big thing. So just Sam do, you know, keep the other, do the other character and we'll find somebody to just do Sheena. And so Mary just called me. Um, she said, Hey, there's a show that I'm doing, working on now. Naruto, <laughs> and I don't know if you'd be interested in doing it or not, but you know, it's like the, this, we need to find a replacement. So it's like, would you wow. be interested? And I'm going, sure, you know, as always, as an actor, it's like, yeah, great. Before Anything, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it was, that That was the crazy story behind it. I never knew that story. Good. That's yeah. something I could tell at conventions now. I'll steal it from you. Yeah, exactly. Please do. But, you know, it's it, ironically, one, I think you do a great job. Oh, Two, you. he did have a bigger role in Shippuden. And then he did. also... Three, I guess, is Sam Regal became such a huge director for oh, Disney, especially yes. that he wouldn't have had the time to do Shino. So, yeah. as luck would have it, I think it worked out. Yeah, <laughs> both of you, right? It did. It did. Um, because I think they'd have a hard time scheduling him. He's he's a very busy guy. Not to mention he has two adorable little children. But um, did, have you ever worked for him once he started directing? Uh, well, he did. He directed a couple of the Naruto games. Right uh, at Disney. No, at um, Disney, yeah. You know, no, I've, I've been down to the wire on pilots with him. Oh. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's heartbreaking. He, he has requested me. He's brought me in. Um, I literally will sit in a waiting room and look at Rachel Dratch and think, eh, 
<laughs> if Rachel Dratch, they're going to go with her, you know? Right. Uh, and Disney is very uh, keen on having a lot of their, I do primarily children's boys' voices. Right. They're, it took a turn. Like, I used to do Disney stuff a lot, or at least somewhat, but it took a turn about eight years ago. Mm. And it took a turn because of social influencers and Twitter, Instagram followers, and also this integrated marketing where, yeah. you know, those shows are full of people that are on their on camera shows. So, and that's not always good. Um, and I don't think it's always what the creators of the shows want. Right. You know, I think that they want the best actor, whoever the best actor is. Sure. But knowing, I'm not talking about Disney specifically, but knowing a lot of directors in town for yeah. many years, I've been doing it a long time, they're not always happy with what they're forced to, to deal with. Right. So, you know, you could be the greatest guy for the job, but, you know, there's the guy that's on yep. Boy Meets World, the spinoff, and they want to cross market it. So, yep, yep, yep. yeah, that yep. took a big turn in the industry for me. Like Disney really kind of dried up for me. I'm, I'm a, I do a lot of Nickelodeon stuff, um, mm -hmm. some DreamWorks stuff, um, stuff like that. But Disney's gotten a little more insular, I think. I yeah. Now that you mention it, I'm I I I realize the same thing. For for a period of time, I I was the same. Um, I did a lot of stuff for Disney, and and then it just kind of dropped. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not. It has nothing to do with um, the directors or creators or writers. It's it's a machine, you know. Yeah. Um, and they're feeding the machine, and. Um, it's, it's a tough, it's a bitter pill to swallow, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I used to find myself going in there quite a bit hmm. um, and doing some shows, Yeah, yeah you know, yeah. and now it's like, boy, I can't remember the last Disney show I've done. I remember the last couple, I auditioned for some big, huge parts in the last six months. Okay. Um, and of course, they're all coming out now and I'm like, yeah. not in yeah. that. Not in that yeah, yeah. But that's how it goes. Yep, it is. Do you have a guilty pleasure? <laughs> what? <laughs> guilty pleasure. Um, I'm pretty public about it, but I'm an, a law and order addict. Are you? Uh, oh, yeah. I will watch episodes I've seen before. Um, my wife will walk in and she's like, haven't you seen this? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I love watching old ones because it's like, you'll be watching it and somebody will pop up and you're like, oh my God, it's Edie Falco. Right. You know, who played the secretary, you know? Right, right. It gives me great pleasure to see that kind of stuff. You're like uh, watching yeah. people in New York that are getting their first, there's an episode, uh, for example, there's an episode with John Krasinski. He has like four lines. Oh and he gosh. plays a basketball player. And to be honest, I don't think he does a very good job in it even. Like, I, I remember thinking, like, I was like, this guy's not that great, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Look at it now. Yeah. Right? But that's my guilty pleasure in a secret dream is to be on Law & Order SVU. I just, I swear to God, I have an Emmy. I've been nominated for an Emmy. I've done, you know, I'm, I'm now uh, going to be a series regular on a pilot once we finish filming it. If we hopefully finish filming it. Um, yes. And as much as that is, that's a dream come true for me. My other dream is to just play a perp on Law and Order SVU. Did you, um, in in the multitude of shows where you've been a a guest art a, a yeah. guest actor, um, did you ever have a fan moment? Did I? <laughs> well, uh, I did an episode of ER. And I had a scene, it was nerve wracking. It, the way they used to do ER is they did it on a track. So go around, the camera would be on a track. Yep. So like a real ER, if you look back at episodes of ER, I don't know where you'd find them, but they, they're steady cam shots. So they'll go from one room to the, you know, the operating room to the yep. waiting room. So there are all these scenarios. And, and I was at the end of a scenario in the shot, mm -hmm. which is nerve wracking because first it's on like, you know, whoever, like it, ER was super hot at the time. I was just right. a guest star. Yeah. So 
it's on, you know, Maria, whatever name is. Um, actually, I love the actress and I can't think. Anyway, then that Czech guy with the funny name, he was on it. So then it comes to me and I'm in the scene with Mackay Pfeiffer and John Stamos. Okay. But I'm kind of, I'm a hypochondriac and I think I have all these diseases. So they just ask me questions, but I'm the one that's saying the medical stuff. So we rehearsed it once and then Laura Innes was directing, who used to be on the show. Yeah. A great actor, director. And she said, I don't, let's switch these lines around. And I'm like, oh, Lord, just like, my God. And I said, will we get to rehearse it once before we actually do it? She said, yeah, don't worry about it. Well, we didn't. Oh. So then I went to makeup, got made up, came back and they're like, all right, let's shoot. And I was like, so panicked that I was going to screw up the lines because they had already shot. Again, it's a tracking shot. I'm the yeah, last yeah, yeah, of the yeah. four scenarios. So you don't want to be that person. So I say my lines and um, uh, John, John Stamos screws up and Mackay Pfeiffer screws up. And I'm like, oh, thank God it was them. And then John Stamos, you weren't supposed to have sides on set. Sides are the little mini versions of the script that you keep mm -hmm. in your pocket. Mm -hmm. You weren't supposed to have that on set because John Wells, the producer, doesn't like it because he thinks it makes actors lazy. Right. So I had them in my pocket, but I was very secret about it. So John Stamos, when, after he blew it, he goes, hey, you. And he poked me in my side fat. You never poke a woman in her side, you know, like at her side. And I'm in a gown. I'm very vulnerable. I'm in a patient gown right. on an operating table with two of the most handsome men in the world. And he's like, pokes me. He's like, hey, you have those sides in your pocket, don't you? Can I see those? And I was like, yeah, okay. And that was kind of a funny moment. Um, another Star Trek moment was... Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And I wasn't starstruck by Jim Carrey. Um, but one day when I was in the trailer, um, the guy that was doing my hair and makeup, or he must have been my makeup guy, he said, Hey, Miley, um, do you mind if I stop on you for about 30 minutes? Because I, one of my regular clients is coming in. She has to do this thing for PBS. And um, would you mind just sitting in the chair next to it, you know? and I'll finish your makeup. Sorry to inconvenience you. It shouldn't take too long. She just wants a little something. I'm like, no, of course not. I knew I wouldn't be shooting for hours, which I wasn't. I might have not have even shot that day. Yeah. So in walks Julie Andrews. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. And I was like, and I had done a one woman sound of music, a theatrical show. I did it in LA once when I first moved here. I did it in Chicago and Minneapolis. It was a big hit. So I love Julie Andrews. So she says something and she's got a bag of McDonald's. She's eating like a, like a <laughs> egg McMuffin. And the PA comes, he's like, would you like anything? Coffee or tea? She's like, I think I'll have a tea. Miley, would you like a tea? And I was like, my career is, my career is, <laughs> I can give That's up. Awesome. Yeah. That is awesome. Oh I'm not God. often starstruck, but that wow. definitely. Yeah, for sure. Do um, you have a favorite Naruto opponent? Orochimaru. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, I did like the pain arc a lot. Um, I mean, obviously, bad Sasuke. Yeah, yeah. That would be, I've never even said that out loud, but yeah. Mm. When Sasuke was bad Sasuke. I, I, I don't, I, I would imagine the answer would be no to this, um, considering, you know, just the, the type of show that it was. But did, was there ever a time when you ever got to record with anybody? We did one time as a promo for, I think, a movie. They got us in the studio together. It was me, Yuri, Tara. I mean, sorry, Yuri, uh, Kate, Higgins. So Sakura, Sasuke, me, I think Liam O'Brien, who plays Gara. Five or six of us. Maybe Sam. I don't know. I don't think Sam was in there. Maybe yeah. Sam. Maybe Quentin Flynn or somebody. Okay. Um, so like kind of the main gang in the very beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before Shippuden. 
Like it was, it wasn't, it was well before Shaputin. Right. So we did a fake record where we were doing, it wasn't ever going to be on broadcast, but it was behind the scenes and it was a nightmare. It was a mess. (laughs) I mean, in a funny way, because we were all just, we knew it was never going to be used. So like someone would say something horrible and dirty and terrible to each other. That like it was completely, it was not usable. Yeah. Um, but no, then other than that. Yeah, yeah. I figured. Okay. <laughs> if you ever had the opportunity to play a different Naruto character. <laughs> I always say Choji. Choji. Yes. Because he eats all the time. I don't know why. I just I can say totally Choji. see that though. Yeah. It's it's kind of a goofy character. Yep. Uh that's that's what I always say. Yeah. yeah I mean yeah. I didn't I wouldn't have the you know cojones to pull off like a lady Tsunade or even any of the other characters like that. Right. Right. I mean, it might be fun to do one of the frogs, the big toads, but, yeah. you know, that's Dave Wittenberg's area there. He yeah. Can have- <laughs> um, uh, so kind of going back to what we had already talked about and that Naruto really has been the only anime that you've been in. Yeah. Um, if you were given the opportunity, like somebody just calls you from an anime show um like what would you like to get a call from wow well i am not i'm not up on my anime okay everything i know from anime i hear from going to conventions like i'll be sitting next to the people from my hero academia mm-hmm. and apparently it's a great show mm-hmm. i don't know i've never seen it yeah um, which i tell them all the time or i love giving like sean schimmel a bunch of crap like what what show are you on <laughs> yeah. What is it? yeah dragon ball what <laughs> um, anytime I can do that, I, I absolutely jump on that bandwagon. Yeah. Um, it's hard for me to say. I don't know what. So I just did a thing for sort of friends and family, uh, their kids, just to break up the monotony of this quarantine uh, last week. And they, some of them asked me about that. Hmm. Um, and I said, I, since I don't, I don't watch anime, I don't really know. I'm a big, I like sports and I like news. Um, I've tried to lay off the news during the quarantine because it drives me crazy. Yep. But, um, and there's no sports. So mm-hmm. again, law and order. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> and true crime stuff I like. Um, okay. But I guess, so let's let's say that if there is, and maybe your Twitch fans can tell, if there's an anime where there's a female detective, um, okay. maybe actually playing an adult female would be fun. Um, then... I don't know. You guys tweet me and tell me if there's an anime where there's a, yeah. a Japanese anime. Female detective. There you go. Female detective. That would be a dream role. That That's would be a dream right. role on camera or voiceover wise. There you go. Um, I like a lot of English dramas. <laughs> um, they have a lot of middle-aged pudgy women like me that play detectives. And like, they're really good. They're really yeah. intriguing and well acted. So um, that's another secret goal of mine. But boy, if you could make that into a cartoon, you could go anywhere with it. There you go. Um, oh. If you could change one thing about Naruto's character, Ooh. what would it be and why? Wow. No one has ever asked me that question in 16 years. Wow. Well, surfing slow, bro. Oh, there you go. Congrats yeah. to you. Who is that that said it? Surfing Slow Bro is... Uh, the All right, user's... Surfing Slow Bro. Hang 10. Uh, <laughs> something I would change. Man, that's a tough question, but a good one. Um, I think his weird little outbursts sometimes, I try and get rid of those a little bit, and his insane fear of ghosts. His insane fear of ghosts. I would say, like, drop that. Right. Like he freaks out yeah. about ghosts. Okay. Um, yeah, that's my answer. <laughs> and now, now, now I'm going to be up all night thinking about like different aspects of his character. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, this is from, uh, ah, this is from our, our VIP user. Um, oh. Do you ever get sick of the balloon? 
either saying it, hearing it back, or requests for it. I just think I, it must be the number one thing <clears throat> that comes up for you as much as it was repetitive in life, but I still get them once in a while and probably for, for a long time. I couldn't hear when your face is to the side. Oh, I can't. Sorry about that. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Um, do you ever get sick of the believe it, either saying it, hearing it back, or requests for it? Believe it. There. <laughs> Does that satisfy you? Um, you know, I don't say it in the show. I haven't said it since episode like 18. No. They took it away. But I do say it at conventions. Yeah, yeah. And the reason why is they said it was a trademark issue. I think it was because it was really annoying and fans were complaining about it. Mm. Because there was no literal translation of data bio. So data bio. So they tried this believe it thing and it I think people got annoyed by it. Um, they kind of are started doing in the last year of Naruto and in Boruto, you know, they put you know in that he says that, which is also a little bit annoying, but they're not as heavy handed with it. Right. Do I get annoyed saying it? No, because usually when I'm saying it, I act like I am. Well, I say it's my least favorite line and my favorite line, but, um, but I say it at conventions and that's what everybody wants to hear. And, you know, so I say it, I've said it millions of maybe, I don't know, probably, over a million times. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's only at conventions to thousands and thousands of people. Um, and it's it's great to have, even though it's weird, it's like we did 730 episodes and it was only in like 18 uh -huh. episodes. It's what everyone wants me to say. So I made little bracelets that say, believe it. And I had wristbands made, they're plastic. And it's donation only, and we give all the money to um, the Detroit Lakes, Minnesota chapter of um, Special Olympics because oh, wow. my nephew, cool. yeah, yeah, my uh, our nephew's daughter is a Special Olympian, and so I had them made, and originally was kind of selling them, and then I was like, this is stupid because I would give half of them away just if it was somebody's birthday or there was a waiter that you know was like, why are you in town? Then they were fans, you know? so I just started doing it for charity, and I've given. We've given them quite a bit of money from that from wow. last year. This That's year, so cool. conventions are, you know, it's going to be like this for a while. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you, uh, you, so you watch sports. What's your favorite sport? Uh, baseball. Baseball? Yeah. Favorite team? Uh, Red Sox and Dodgers, which was kind of a struggle for me when they played each other in the World yeah. Series. Because <laughs> I've been a lifelong Red Sox fan, but I'm a Dodger fan, and I've lived here for – I've lived here longer than anywhere and yeah. I go to the games if I can. And my director from lab rats has been giving me over the last several years, he gives me tickets once wow. in a while. That's awesome. yeah, it's amazing. And he, he's so funny. His name is Victor, Victor. And he goes, my Lita. He always calls me my Lita. My Lita, you're on the list for the Dodgers tickets. You're not first on the list, but you're on. <laughs> <the list." laughs> um, yeah, I love baseball, which is also Japanese. Japan, they love baseball. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe I am part Japanese at heart. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like 99% Irish and 1% Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so both mom and dad from Ireland? Yeah. Actually, my brother has been researching and um, – case I have to get out of this country. Uh, he's been putting together all the documents for us to apply. We can get dual citizenship. And oh, he's wow. missing one birth certificate for one of my grandfathers. Um, and that's the missing piece of the puzzle. And he's got everything else. And it was wow. quite a process trying to get all this stuff. Wow. So we're, my siblings and I are going to get Irish passports. So we'll have dual citizenship. Wow, that is very, very cool. Yeah. I mean, we should have done it when it was easier to do it because people were in their offices and stuff. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I'm assuming you've been there. I have been there. Um, I was there when I was a kid. And then I didn't go, I went to Dublin Comic Con, which was great. I haven't done the whole, like, just go and spend 10 days. Like, everyone drives around in a car and does all that. Yeah. Uh, my parents have done that. My sister, everybody's done it but me. But 
I went to Dublin Comic Con um, and it was amazing. And the fans there came from all over Ireland um, and they were so great. It was so wild. And when I, when I brought my passport to go into customs, the guy said to me, and it still chokes me up. He said to me, he goes, welcome home, Miss Flanagan. And I was like, <gasps> you know, Aww. like, yeah, because it because so cool. I hadn't been there and, you know, there was no stamp or, you know, right. so it was kind of funny. And then my wife, who's of English heritage, she goes, and you. <laughs> <laughs> where, where are you? Where are your people from? I, I, I only know about three quarters of them. So um, my mom's side of the family is from Russia. Um. Uh, and then my dad's side is where it's the, the three quarter because half of him is Hungarian and the other half he doesn't know about. Okay. <laughs> he never, yeah, yeah, yeah. he never met his real dad. Um, and, uh, my grandmother, when she was alive, would never talk about, um, her first time. Yeah. So it was like just a mystery thing, you know? Are you going to do an ancestry Test? You know, I might do it sometime, like the Twenty Three and Me thing. Yeah, yeah, just to just to kind of at some point in time in the future, I'll probably do that. But. We sent one to my brother for Christmas one year, and he's like, "Are you kidding me? <laughs> we're so Irish, right?" It's like, what, like, what were the results? Be? He's like, ninety-nine point nine percent Irish. <laughs> there might have been a Spaniard or somebody who slipped in like five centuries ago. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, oh, well, uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Oh, uh, Alpha Alpha Beta nineteen as is asking, how was it when you got cast as the principal on Ned's declassified school survival guide? No, I wasn't on that. I was on Lab Rats as the principal. Lab Rats. Okay, yeah. so you weren't on Ned's Declassified. Sorry about that, Alpha, Alpha Beta 19. Uh, um, she was not on uh, that, but she was on Lab Rats. So yeah, I, I went into that audition completely prepared. Um, and it was a, it was for the, not the, they'd already done the pilot, but it was the first episode. Or was it the second? It was the first episode. Um, I would say it's the first. Now I'm wondering if they counted the pilot as the first, so it was the second, but whatever. So I went into audition and um, it was, uh, I loved the character right away. And I, but I was supposed to be on roller skates. So the whole time. Oh. So I would wheel in and out of scenes. And I said, when I got it to my agents, I can't roller skate. I can't, I have tried. I can't ice skate. I can't roll. I'm terrible. Even since when I was a kid, I couldn't do it. Oh, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I said, make sure you tell them though. And they were like, okay. So I then get called back to producers. So you're in a tight callback is when you're, it's called at producers. You're in a tiny room. Right. There's a casting person with a camera and a reader beside them right here. And you look at the reader and then there's all these people crammed on couches and chairs, like another seven people in there in a small room, like the size of a tiny room. And they were laughing their asses off. And I was like, I knew it because I, the script was so funny. And yeah. so I knew I nailed it. So then they called and said, I got it. I was elated. Fantastic. And I said, you know, I don't know how to roll it. Can you please tell them? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. So I get to the table read and I said, they know I can't roller skate because it's still written in the script. Mm -hmm. She whips in and skates out. Mm -hmm. I was like, you know, I can't roller skate, right? And they're like, oh, don't worry about it. And then they said, okay, after the table read, this is Rex, and he's the stunt coordinator. He's going to teach you how to roller skate. And I'm like, ah! oh no. Of course, I'm like, I'm totally going to lose this job. And I just did the table read for it. Right. So I'm like, I, 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 I'll, sure, I'll try. He tries with me for, three hours. I can't do it. He's frustrated. I'm out of my mind frustrated because I was like, 
every step of the way. You know, I can't make sure you tell them. I even emailed it so they had it to run. Okay, next day we go. So we would have our table reads on Wednesday. Thursday morning, you do another table read and then you rehearse. Yeah. I rehearse. Then you're going to go with a stunt guy to, to work on your roller skating, which I can't do. Mm. Again, I'm like, I'm about to be fired, you know. So I'm like, this is hopeless. I can't do it. So then one of the producers said, well, my kid, who's 11, by the way, and by this time I'm way older than 11 mm. and older than 40, says um, they use those wheelies shoes, heelies and whatever Oh, called. right. They're supposed to be pretty easy. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I buy a pair of those. Yeah. I spend the entire weekend in my house here. <laughs> I have wooden floors that are trashed already because of the dog and we have a pool and I just haven't redone them because do- we used to have two dogs and it's just like, you know, they're wooden. I could refinish them. They'd be lovely, but yes. why bother? They were going to get trashed. I'm wheeling around the house with knee pads on and elbow pads, crashing into the walls all weekend long. Oh, no. And I get there on Monday. I can't. I just can't. I, I can't roller skate. They're like, okay, don't worry about it. And that one episode, which was possibly recurring, became almost 70. So I wasn't a series regular, but I was, you know, basically pretty much. On another show, it would be called... Not a Disney show, it would be a series regular. But, right. Yeah. Right. Wow. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That was a long story, sorry. Uh, um, <laughs> Do, have, have you ever watched any of the Marvel franchise, like Avengers stuff? No. Not really? Okay. No, I'm not. I'm not into those kind of movies, really. Okay. Um, I see, um, you know, Wakanda. Um, yeah. I went to see that in theaters. Um, that was great. I loved it. Maybe I should watch more of those movies. When I was a kid, we didn't have movies. I was in Thailand, right. so we didn't get American movies. Okay. And then I was overseas, and we we were at the army base. Would have a movie two years after everybody else got it, mm. and we would watch it but it would be there for a month or whatever and then when i went to college i didn't even have a tv i was poor and i was certainly too poor to go to movies all the time and too busy yeah and then after college i probably didn't have a tv for a while too because i was performing all night right um i kind of missed the boat on a lot of but i'm really weird culturally like people are like you're so american but like they'll say stuff and i'm like i've never seen star wars the original star wars wow Okay. I just missed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, because you've done all the mediums as far as being an actor goes, stage, television, you, you have done a couple of films, haven't you? I've done a lot of films, yeah. yeah. I did Yes Man, The Station Agent, Phone right. Booth, uh, 500 Days of Summer, Okay. Uh, Ice Age 3. Oh, yes. Rainbow, Very cool. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I've done a lot of films. Yeah. yeah. And then obviously voiceover. If it, this is not a question that, that is that somebody's asking, I'm just curious yeah. as an actor to another actor. If somebody just paid you, <laughs> right? Just paid you to do one medium, one type of medium, where would you feel the most comfortable at home? Well, I just booked an amazing pilot for ABC, which is a primetime comedy on camera pilot. Yep. And it is a dream job. And it's incredible. We had just started working on it. We hadn't filmed yet, but we do camera tests, fittings, all that crazy yep. stuff. Right. Uh, in fact, I have to do something with them this weekend that's a surprise. Um, and we were supposed to start, we literally we did the network read for all the people in New York and everybody here, all the Disney execs. I mean, the top of the top of the top. Mm-hmm. And that was on Thursday. And we were supposed to have a cast dinner Thursday night and they called us 
we were supposed to start on Monday rehearsing, start filming on Wednesday, and they shut us down on Friday. They called us and said, you know, we're not, it's on hold, and it's still on hold. Right. Um, so I'm going to say if, if I couldn't ever do anything again, I would give my left ear to be on a, an adult um, sitcom, an adult comedy on television. I love television. Yeah. I love, I love performing on stage. That would be hard to give up. Yeah. I love it all. I love it all. But if you said, like you narrowed it down. Yeah. I literally had booked my dream job and went, I don't know if you know what going to network testing is like. It's oh, yeah. the most stressful thing in, you know, I mean, obviously it's not brain surgery, but for an actor, it's yeah. on the scale of the most stressful thing. And I got it and found out I got it when I was in Vegas at a convention with Mary Elizabeth and wow. Steve. Bloom. Yeah. It, Mary Elizabeth was with me when I got the phone call. Wow. And um, so I, kind of booked this dream job and I'm in limbo right now. Yeah. So it's a, it's a very weird, you know, I've been working towards that goal, which has always been a goal. Mm -hmm. When I started doing comedy, we would get together and watch, I mean, I'm really old, but we get together Thursday nights and we watched uh, in college. I'd go to my friend's dorm room and we'd watch our apartment dorm room, whatever. And it was cheers, Roseanne, and like Seinfeld or whatever the three were, yep. the lineup, Thursday yep. nights. Yep. And then we go out drinking. Yeah. And I never thought I'd be working with the people. And I have worked with all of those people since. Wow. A lot of the writers, some of the stars. Mm -hmm. I'm like, this is, you know, so that's my answer. Yay. That's awesome. How about that's you? Awesome. Um, I, you know, I, I guess if, if I could go back, um, and uh, do on camera stuff. I I loved doing on camera when when I was given the opportunities to do it. I I had to take a step back because uh, you know my personal situation didn't really allow it. Uh huh. And so I had to focus on you know regular work. And, yeah. Um, and then that's when voiceovers really just kind of took a took over, and it's like wow. So I can, you know. It was, it was that, it was that light, light bulb that went off, you know, obviously I would love to continue doing on camera if I had the opportunity to do it, but it's like, wait a minute. So I can get paid the same amount of money <laughs> by coming in and dressed whatever I want to be yeah. dressed like, and just, you know, do this for like two to four hours and still get paid the same, what, you know, and yeah, so, yeah. I mean, I, I, <laughs> That is the story of so many people. And thank goodness I'll knock on my wooden table here that we have that opportunity. I'm not poo-pooing the fact that I, I could do voiceovers for the rest of my career and be happy with it. Sure. Um, but I did just happen to land a dream job. <laughs> and I'm yeah. like, you know, so I'm like, it's, totally. it's the one, one thing I will say though, as pertains to you and I, that would be character actors, right? Mm -hmm. Is that, we get to do so much in anime specifically yeah. Yeah. that we would never be able to do. Right. Like you can play the, the, whatever you want, whatever drama you want, yep. you know, you can play the dashing young prince and you know, I could play. The, who's like, you know, I mean, with all the fighting and stuff, no one's going to pay to see me on camera doing that stuff. <laughs> Nor should they. Although maybe that would be funny. But. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, this is a great question. And I think it's probably uh, a, a really good question to probably wrap things up with since it's uh, 625. Um, and, um, that would be if you could write a letter to your younger self, Ooh. what would you say and what advice would you give? Um, wow. Who asked that question? Uh, this is Melizard. Melizard. 
Melazard, thank you for the question. That's a great question. Um, I have thought about not writing a letter, but I've thought about things like that, similar to that. Um, one thing I would say was, even when you're working, which I already was getting paid to do comedy in Minneapolis and working, um, I, I thought I was beyond taking classes at the Groundlings, which is a great, it's where everybody from SNL, a lot of people matriculate from there to SNL. I auditioned for SNL. Um, back in the day and for, you know, other shows that are big like that. I would say I would give myself more confidence, more confidence to be myself as opposed to trying to make myself into a different person. Um, the advice that I was given when I was practicing with my friend Mo Collins, who you might know from uh, F is for Family, she was nominated for an Emmy, and Mad TV, and now she's on Fear of the Walking Dead. She lives about a mile and a half from me and two miles and I went to practice with her for my pilot and she's known me for 30 years. We've worked on and off stage together and some on camera stuff too. And she's, she's like, this is such your part. Be the most Miley you can be. Mm. This is you. And that would be some advice I would give myself, not try to be another, you know, it's like, there's only one, there's only one Cecily strong. There's only one Kate McKinnon. Right. Right. Um, but there's only one me. Yeah. And I think it would be the most you you can be. And I tell my students in voiceover, for voiceover, for on camera in LA, they kind of want you plus 10%. Mm -hmm. Right. And that because you grow up when you start acting, you try and be all these different things. But I say in voiceover, it's you plus 100 plus like an extra 25%. Yeah. Because we're not seeing you. Right. So that advice would be like trust in training. Get training from people that you admire. Um, swallow bitter pills and do everything you can. Um, and I went through a lot of jobs and a lot of hardships. And the last two years have been very slow on camera for me. This booking this pilot has been a huge deal. Um, there's just and trust in the downtimes. They're going to be uptimes. Um, and, and know that the that in those downtimes you can be creative, and I think that's what you're doing here. Yeah. And I think I've done it with a couple of other friends. I don't feel like I need to reinvent the wheel. Um, when I moved to LA, I did three things a day for my career, every day, even if I was sick. Because even if I was sick, I could watch something that I wouldn't watch. You know, like a like a kid's pre-K cartoon. Right. Um. So I think it would be that. Be, be more of yourself and trust yourself. And, and learn from not only the people you admire, but your peers. Mm -hmm. You know, I learn a lot from my peers. And I used to feel like, I think a chip on my shoulder about that. I think I used to feel like, well, why am I going to listen to, you know? I mean, like, why would I, for instance, it'd be like, this hasn't happened. I never felt this way. But Crispin, Crispin Freeman is great. Yes. He's a good friend of mine. He's a great actor. I love him as a human. He's a terrific actor and a great teacher. But my younger self would say, well, we're peers. Mm. Why would I ever take his class? Mm. Yeah. And you know what? I think, you know, you should take his class. Right. You know, we even have, if you're on the same show. Yeah. We all have, I, 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 my personal opinion is no matter what our experiences are. We all have our own unique experiences growing up as who we are. And there's always, I, I personally think there's always something we can learn, even though we may have thought we have learned everything, you know, it's like, yes. there's always that one little sliver that somebody else has had that you've never had that experience of. And it's like, boom, even if it's just for that, you know, it's like, wow, that's amazing. I can add that now to my tool belt, you know? Yeah. And, and that's another part of it. Um, not as far as the letter, but as far as continuing is yeah. you do have to continue to learn. I, I was rehearsing with a good friend of mine, Tim Bagley for the pilot as well. So I sought out my peers to rehearse with. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, and, and they said, do you want it? Do you want counseling or not? You know, do you want me to give you some advice or not about what you're doing in the scene? And I said, I do. And 
at one point, Tim has said to me, not for this role, but for other roles. I said something about a part and he goes, well, why do you think you, why do you think you deserve it? Why do you think you deserve it? Right. And I was like, well, I do. And he's like, well, you better work for it. You know? Yeah. Sort of, um, to my younger self, um, accept that tough love and that from people that you, that you trust and admire, not from strangers, but not from someone on the internet or someone on Reddit or something, but accept that advice. Like, you know what? It would be a lot better if you did this. Yeah. I get a lot of auditions where I have to sing. I just got an audition where I have to sing again. Mm. I have told my agents for 20 years, I don't sing. (laughs) I've sung on two theme songs for cartoons. Right. So I've actually been paid to sing. I've been paid to sing like, I've sung in cartoons. I'm no Tara Strong. I'm no Ari Walgren. But that's a weakness of mine. It's like, well then, I should take my lazy ass and go get some singing lessons. (laughs) You know? Yeah. Lesson learned. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Well, with all of that. Do you think that looks like me? Do I think that looks like you? If it was Andy Warhol, (laughs) um, you know, maybe, you know, a younger you, perhaps. Yeah. Okay. Some sort of resemblance. My old roommate, when I was (laughs) in my 20s, did that of me so the hair probably went and i did use i quit smoking like 30 years ago okay but my old roommate that's his version of me okay all right i just want to tell you in case you've been distracted (laughs) well with all of that and i know that there's a, a a ton more people who are um wanting to get uh, questions answered, but un- unfortunately, because of the time frame, and I, I don't want to take up too much of your time, um, and I, I've also got stuff that I've got to get going and doing as well. Yeah. Um, maybe, you know, if you don't mind coming back sometime, we can get some of those other questions answered. Absolutely. I would I would enjoy it, and God knows we have the time, right? Yeah, absolutely. And um, just kind of tagging on to what you've already said, Uh, With all of our own unique experiences and, you know, being the individuals that we are, there is, and trust me when I say this, you know, and I've only had the opportunity to meet you in person once before at Anime Arkansas, but, you know, just being the actors that we are, and even though we may not have necessarily always connected, you know, you know, personally and physically, you are, Maylie, Maylie, just an absolute tremendously awesome human being oh. and i've i've i'm honored to be able to have you know have been connecting with you on this and and previously you know when we were at the other convention but thank you thank you thank you from the bottom of my heart for oh. being able to to come on and and uh be a part of this and, thank you um, please give my love to um to lisa i will and um you have a great tremendous rest of your week. I will. I'm I'm going to say this because only because I follow the posts that you put on Facebook. She needs to open up a restaurant. (laughs) I'm just going to say it right now. When things get better and the coronavirus is done, it's like, you know, yeah, Miley's place or whatever, you know, and it's It's just like, boom. Just so you all know, and I don't always post it on my uh, my Facebook is personal, so don't befriend me on Facebook because yeah. I won't accept where, your... Where can people follow you if they don't do they that? They can all? follow me on, on Twitter. On, t- um, on Twitter? And Instagram. Okay. Um, do you uh, have the same account name for both? I have Twitter is... Wait, is Twitter... One of them is the real Miley Flanning is Instagram because someone stole my name. Oh. And Twitter geez. is... Hold on. I, I don't know why I'm spacing out on this. Probably because I've had like a glass and a half of um, champagne. Um, yeah, Twitter is at Miley Flanagan, M A I L E F L A N A G A N, and Instagram is at the real Miley Flanagan. There you um, go. 
And I encourage you to follow me because I can't get verified by Twitter, which apparently is somehow impossible now okay. or has been for me. Like they asked me to send them all this stuff. And I'm like, I'm not sending you a copy of my license <laughs> passport. You know? I'm yeah. like, I'll, I'll just be unverified. That's fine. But yeah. anyway, and um, thank you for the opportunity. It's really sweet talking with you. And boy, if you, if you give up your career as an actor, you could certainly be a, a, a host of a show. <laughs> you just well, knocked it out of the park. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. All right, Miley. Have a great rest of your week, and I will talk with you later. All right. Thanks. Bye, everybody. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, for those of you who want to uh, go to my channel tomorrow uh, for the first time, going into new territory, going to be playing Guild Wars 2 and uh, share with you some of the secrets that I've that I've had in terms of playing for over a year and um, we'll be able to hang out then. So until tomorrow, guys, have a great rest of your evening. Take care.